Hello students, welcome to Legacy AIS Academy. In today's video, we are going to discuss about the recent AI export rule that has been unveiled by the Joe Biden administration and how this particular rule is going to have an impact on the India's import as far as specifically the graphic processing unit is concerned from the United States. Now, to give you the background and the context of this political issue, just few days before admitting office, Joe Biden administration has released a very expansive regulatory framework related to the export of AI hardware such as graphic processing unit and this could have far reaching consequences for India's artificial intelligence ambition. Now it is not that only India will be affected by it, there are many countries across the world which will have both positive and negative impact from this particular will. Now this particular regulatory framework has been referred as framework for artificial intelligence diffusion. And the main objective of this framework is to classify the countries into three different tiers and based on the place of countries in each of the individual tiers, the US will determine how and to what extent AI export can be done to these countries. Now, if you talk about India itself, out of the three tier classification, India is put in the middle tier or tier two of this classification system. And many experts argue that because of this placement of India in this tier, it will face some restrictions on how many amount or number of GPUs India can import from the United States in a particular frame of time. And that could negatively impact the ongoing process of procuring 10,000 GPUs that India had planned earlier largely to build up India's domestic AI computing capacity. Few years back we know that India has launched India AI mission where it has focused on in the next one decade to build a domestic AI computing capacity. For that, the GPUs could have played a very, very important role. Now, why GPUs could have played a very important role? Because these are the part, the graphic processing unit are the hardware, the components that play a very critical role in training and building large scale artificial intelligence model, which are essential for the advanced AI applications. The advanced AI applications we are talking about, for example, in the case of medical sciences, in case of the research activities, for example, in the case of India is exploring in Central Indian Ocean, the polymetallic nodules. So the modeling, the exploration and all this could have been done by the large scale AI model and for that GPUs were required. Apart from that, the data center GPUs are also crucial for several parallel operations. This can be AI, media analytics and as well as 3D rendering of solution. Not only that, GPUs also are essential for advanced use cases. As you know that today we are focused upon the machine learning and also modeling as well as the cloud gaming and all that. So to build such a kind of ecosystem, we require a large number of GPUs, at least 10,000 is what in the near term was the expectation or we can, get, we can see the demand of the sector was. So this can be adversely impacted because of this particular framework. Now to understand this framework, as I told you in the beginning that the countries across the world has been divided into three tier. The tier one largely is those countries which are the closest allies of United States. The blue color countries here are belonging to tier 1. So these are the Canada. Then you have most of countries of Western and Northern Europe such as Germany, UK, France, Spain. You have Scandinavian countries such as Sweden and Norway. And then you have countries such as Japan and South Korea in Asia as well as Australia in the Oceania. Now these are the countries which will be where the export of AI uh, technology or AI hardware will be most permissive and less restrictive. Tier 2 are where most of the world's countries are clubbed and these include countries such as India, Pakistan, then you have countries such as Kazakhstan, most of the African countries as we can see from here, then most of the South American countries and even Mexico has been put under this particular tier. And then the tier 3 are those countries where restriction will be most, uh, where we can say the export will be most restrictive in nature and these are the countries which US, US considered as enemy countries or what you can call as a adversarial countries and these are countries such as China and Russia, the two giant countries and apart from that several you can see in the West Asia, obviously Iran where the sanctions are already imposed and some countries in the Northern and Central Africa. But what we can see is that most of countries across the world belong to the tier 2. Now if we try to go into more detail that what does basically it mean, now tier 1 already we have discussed the number of countries. So what the regulation implies that for these countries there will be unrestricted access to the advanced US AI chips including the GPUs. However, there are two restrictions. First, even if these countries are importing AI goods or AI chips from US, 
they cannot deploy more than 25 percent of their processing capacity in the sphere of ai outside any tier one countries that means maximum limit for example australia has imported ai chips from usa and now it tries to open and deploy the data center processing capacity in india this limit that maximum up to 25 percent of it can be deployed Second, less than or equal to 7% of capacity it should have in any two-tier nation, not more than that. So, the entire Australia's AI processing capacity we talk about, if suppose it want to deploy it in India, it cannot be less than or it cannot be more than 7%. It should be up to 7%, that is the maximum limit. But apart from that, for the domestic AI ecosystem, the countries are free to export, uh, free to import as many or as much AI chips as they deem necessary. Second is tier 2 including India. So, there they have put a limit on the computing power. That means there is a cap of 50,000 GPUs between the years of 2025 to 2027. That means even if India needs suppose that 60, 70,000 GPUs by the 2027, it cannot import more than 50,000 from United States and more power is allowed with the VU in this particular case. Third, as we discussed tier 3 countries such as China, Iran, Russia as I told you which US considered as adversary. For them, there is a complete ban on the US AI processor imports. So, this is how the classification has been done as particular regulatory framework. Now, as we discussed that India has been placed in tier 2. So, many experts argue that because of this restriction imposed on tier 2 nations, India will have to or the Indian incorporation, Indian companies will have to face increased compliance burden for cloud companies, data centers, etc. etc. Government AI mission, I told you, India AI mission it will also come under the country limit that means there will be restriction on how many gpus they can be import, it can be imported from us and third us hyperscalers may have an edge over the indian rivals so it is also giving edge to the us companies as compared to the american uh, as compared to the indian companies so overall india will face a limit on how much computing power they can import from the american companies however there is also one provision that says that if the countries such as india signs a bilateral agreement and that also depends on the case to case basis, country to country basis. In that case, this particular cap can be doubled. That means the normal cap is 50,000 GPUs between 25 to 27. That can be doubled to 100,000. But that is based on uh, that is dependent upon whether the countries are able to reach some kind of deal or not. Now, most interestingly, within this entire regulatory framework, a special provision has been made for two major countries, and that is India and China. In this context, what the framework says that apart from this tiered classification, it envisions a special review called the General Validated End User, that is the GVEE. And this includes only two countries. It's not that only India and China are the member, but only India and China itself has been included in this particular provision of the bill. Now, what is the significance of GVEU? Now, the regulatory framework says that if the Indian companies, for example, are able to get this general validated end user approval from the America. In that case, they can use the exported item for civilian and military purposes, but not for nuclear use. And that is where you can see the difference. In the case of China, America has, uh, America has allowed that Chinese company can only use the exported items for the civilian purposes only. That means China cannot use for the military purposes, obviously not for nuclear purposes. India can use for civilian and military, but not for nuclear. So, a certain advantage has been given to India. Obviously, it also signifies the strengthening of bilateral relations that we have seen in past one to two decades between US and India. And many US uh, lawmakers also have continuously emphasized that with India, US enjoys a very strong and, bon uh, and very good warm relationship. And many times there has been demand of uh, classifying India as a major non-NATO ally as well. However, as far as the chip manufacturer, the largest chip manufacturer of the world, NVIDIA is concerned, it has criticized this particular regulation of the Biden government, Biden administration, because it has claimed that such kind of regulatory framework will undermine America's leadership. The reason is because it says that due to such regulation and the implementation of this particular framework, there will be an overarching bureaucratic control over how much export and import can be done from US and uh, from the US to their countries in especially in the sphere of the chips and artificial intelligence. And this also is very different if you look at look at the approach of the Biden administration and the Trump administration. NVIDIA has claimed that Trump was much more we can say liberal in the case of export policies. 
and it is because of this region the first trump administration had laid the foundation for america's current strength and success in ai driven by such kind of environment by fostering such kind of environment where us industries were more competitive in nature were highly competitive in nature and they were also not compromising any kind of national security and thus finally what they have said that such kind of regulatory framework as has been brought by the biden administration will not mitigate any kind of threat but obviously it will only weaken the america's global competitiveness but again we have to understand that in few days the uh, donald trump is going to take the office of the uh, president in the united states so the implementation of this particular regulatory framework or regulation depends on whether he goes ahead with it or not but that is all for this particular video i hope you got the gist of the new ai regulatory framework and its possible implications on india especially in the sphere and the ecosystem of artificial intelligence if you like the video please hit the like button share it with fellow aspirants as well as subscribe to our channel for more such content thank you